Here we are in Assisi, the bishop's residence, in a place that was covered for 800 years. We're in the city of Assisi, which gave birth to one of the greatest saints, certainly in Italy and throughout the world, Francis, born 1182. Francis came from a very wealthy family. His father was a silk merchant, and Francis was the natural heir to that business. He was the king of the feasts. In his testament, he writes that he spent the first 25 years of his life living in sin, the budding night fighting against the neighboring city of Perugia, which had its eyes on the city of Assisi. But at one moment, he was taken a prisoner and spent the good part of a year in a dungeon in Perugia where he reflected upon his life. And perhaps there he heard the words of Jesus who said to him, Francis, everything you consider sweet today will become bitter, and everything you consider bitter today will become sweet. Francis returned to Assisi. And a city that was surrounded by leper colonies, Francis found the lepers obnoxious. But one day, riding on his horse towards River Torto, he met a leper. And incredibly, Francis dismounted his horse and embraced that leper. It wasn't the leper who was changed, it was Francis' heart that changed. Then he heard the voice of Jesus from the cross of San Damiano, the cross that said to him in that dilapidated church, Francis, go and rebuild my church that, as you see, is falling into ruins. Francis believed it meant rebuilding the church with bricks and water, but he soon realized that there was a much deeper, greater mission. The church was in moral crisis, and he needed to give a sign at that time of great laxity of what the church meant to be poor, to be stripped. Francis began to feed the lepers, selling the goods of his father, much to the chagrin of his father. And so it was that his father wanted to denounce him to the city judges. At that time, the bishop himself could judge Francis, who was seen as somewhat of a religious figure. And so his father brought him to this very place. This very place in Assisi, the bishop's residence, which has been rediscovered after 800 years. Francis came to this very door 800 years ago. The year was 1206. And you can imagine his trepidation. The crowds here in this piazza, his family, everyone against him. You can imagine him knocking on that door, entering this very door, crossing the threshold here, and going to the bishop, not expecting, not knowing what to expect, pouring out his soul. And then in front of the bishop, stripping himself naked as we do in baptism. And so it was that Francis, Francis, uh, became that new man with that gush of the Holy Spirit, literally. Uh, and the bishop protected him with his mantle, a sign of Mother Church. And Francis came out into this very square again where his parents were waiting and he said to his father, no longer are you my father, Pietro Bernardone, but our father in heaven. Not out of disrespect to his father, but simply saying, I have a father in heaven who is going to look after me. The door of decision, that threshold, which he needed to cross to give a sign of his desire to give everything for Jesus and to depend completely on his providence. This threshold became important again 20 years later, in the year 1225. Francis is now seen as a saint in the city. He's gathered thousands of friars behind him. People have seen his charitable work, and they are now completely behind him. But here in this very place, in the bishop's house again, he brought the mayor of the city to cross that threshold and to reconcile with the bishop. They both forgave each other after months 
of stalemate. It was Francis who brought them together and so wrote in the canticle of Brother Son, Blessed are those who forgive out of love for you. They shall be crowned. The second threshold, the threshold, the door of reconciliation. And then there was that third door, the door towards eternity. Francis, in the year 1226, is dying. And he spends the last month of his life here in the bishop's residence. It was the only place where he could be looked after with safety, seen as a saint at the time. But people who came to this very door heard great singing coming out. Francis praising God in the midst of his bitterest suffering when he was dying with the stigmata. And they questioned, what is going on? And Francis told his provincial, how can I not sing the praises of God when I am going towards eternity to spend eternity with the one who has loved me, has had mercy on me, and has taken me as his son. The door towards eternity. What decision do you and I have to make in our life? What threshold do you and I have to cross? Perhaps in a relationship, perhaps in openness to life, perhaps at work. Where am I called to be reconciled? Perhaps for years I have not forgiven someone, or I hold something in my heart that eats away at me. Where do I need to cross that threshold with the grace of God as Francis did? Why not take some time today to reflect on those three questions? Where am I being called to make a decision? Where is Jesus calling me to be reconciled? Where is he calling me to think about eternal life? Reflect upon these most important questions of life. And with the grace of Jesus, he will enable us to cross that threshold and he will provide for us just as he provided for St. Francis of Assisi.